Hi friends, this is Caitlin from Caitlin Annalie Cards. Welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal channel. Today I'm going to be using the Concord and Ninth Window Shop Pop-Up Base Dies and the Flower Shop Stamps and Dies that you can add on to customize this into a little floral boutique or florist shop. And we're going to be making the most adorable 3D card with this. I am so in love with how this one turned out, but fair warning, it is a little bit of a longer video today because this was definitely a process. 100% worth it, but definitely a process. So I started out by laying out all of my die cuts and getting my paper ready to go. I am using 80 pound cardstock for all of my accessories and I used 110 pound cardstock for my card base just to make sure that everything was nice and sturdy. We're gonna cut one of each of the largest dies. That's the window shop front and the little awning. And then all of my other dies I'm just laying out. We're gonna do most of these in one pass and then I will trim off the excess paper from that um, sheet on the right hand side and I will run some of my die cuts through a second time. I'm going in now with the Spellbinders yellow tape. I love this stuff. It's so perfect for holding all of my dies in place. And um, the one thing I will tell you is I put the window insert die into the door and ran it through in one pass and it did move because I only taped it in one spot. So I ended up running that through again. If you are going to do this, I recommend just running it two separate times. Otherwise, definitely make sure that you are taping that window die into place really well. And I did use a little picker to help me scrape all of these tiny things, especially these flower center dots um, off of my die cutting plate especially if you are like me and your die cut plate has seen better days um, you might want to one of those to help save your nails a little bit so I have two little clear bowls here I'm pouring all of my accessory pieces into the one on the left and all of my building pieces the, the parts that are going to be the main part of our actual shop are all going in that bowl on the right. You don't have to do this. I just thought it was an easier way for me to mentally prep and know exactly what I had, where it was, and help kind of guide me through the rest of this process. So I am cutting a second one of the columns because we're going to put one on either end of the card. I'm cutting a second door because I messed up that first one. I'm also going to cut a second crate. I'm cutting extra flowers and the flowers in this set are amazing because one die set will cut out all of those flowers at one pass. I absolutely love that. I love when companies do that and I think Concord Knights did a great job. I have a couple extra flower pots and an extra one of those hanging baskets and I just, it's so much fun. So I did go through and again, separate all my pieces out. Definitely taking my time. Uh, once or twice, a couple things did fall on the floor and it took me forever to find them because they are on the smaller side. So definitely take your time. Make sure that you're being really careful. And you can see now that I did my first pass with my door, I'm adding the window and trying again. I'm also taping from the center this time. And then I'm going to use the solid door panel to cut a piece of vellum, just putting a little bit of um, scrap computer paper behind it to keep it from getting marked up. And then that way, when it's time to assemble the door, I can put kind of that frosted glass behind it. So to start out my main panel, I am scoring all of the score lines on that shop front just so I can get an idea of where everything is going to lay because I'm going to be using the brick stamp that comes in the flower shop stamps to give our inside of our flower shop a really fun brick background or backsplash almost. So I am just holding that window shop front in place with my magnet. Once I have my bricks lined up with the top of the window, I'm going to slide that out of the way and get my inking started. For all of these accessories and the, the front of the shop itself, I'm going to be using Lost Shadow. I did go in with two layers for the tiles or bricks in the back just to make sure that they did stand out really well. 
And I knew I wanted to add a shelf to the inside, but I wasn't positive where. And you can see in between that first and second layer, I had left a little bit of a gap on accident. So it seemed like the universe telling me that that is the perfect place for my shelf to go. So you'll see in the end product, that is exactly where I put my shelf. And the rest of the time I had a really easy time lining those up. So that was not a concern again. Now for my awning, I decided to go in with Salvage Patina um, Distress Oxide. I am using Distress Oxides for all of this project. You can see them all lined up there at the top. I did grab a few extra that I didn't end up using. So uh, Salvage Patina, Mowed Lawn, Twisted Citron, Squeeze Lemonade, Spice Marmalade, Picked Raspberry, Ground Espresso, and Lost Shadow were the ones that ended up being used. I did not use the Antique Linen or the Frayed Burlap. It just didn't go with my overall look by the time this was done. Um, what I did do was stamp out the open sign and the sentiment from the flower shop stamps um, with the ground espresso onto the little shop sign die and across the very top of my awning. I just thought that was such a cute place to put the sentiment on this card right across the top. That way it's not obscuring any of the details and it doesn't get lost. It's just right there, proud and prominent right there on the top. To color in the building front, I'm going in with the Lost Shadow and you can see this is very subtle, but once the whole card comes together, it definitely does pop and you can tell that there's something there, that it's not just a pure white. So with the awning, you wanna kind of do a Z shape. So you're folding the top uh, into itself and the bottom score line away. And then now it was time for me to decorate the inside of the shop. I wanted to get the inside all done before I added my storefront. So I'm going in with this is actually one of the dies that's meant to go on the front top of the window in the front. I just cut a second one out and I used some of the ground espresso that was just kind of left on my brush and made the perfect little wooden shelf. So I laid that in place with my bricks. Then I inked up my door to match my awning, going in with just a little bit of a lighter hand and just being really careful and taking my time so that I don't bend any of my cardstock. I also shaded in the bottom detail section of the door. And then I am going to be adding some ground espresso and a copper gel pen to the um, car like mail slot <laughs> and I made the mistake that tiny little rectangle that I'm working on now I added it to the mail slot thinking it was a second layer it's the door handle guys it's the door handle so I ended up having to cut a second one of those and coloring it up later to add on to my door handle I'll figure that out in a second when I realize what am I supposed to do for the door handle now how do you get in but my mail slot is very lovely and extra detailed but that's the cool thing about dies like this is you that you really can't do wrong like there's it looks so customizable but even within that you could customize it even more and make yours even more unique and different just depending on how you see things I did not want my vellum on my window to just be up against the white so just using a pencil to kind of frame out my base I colored in a rectangle with some warm gray W5 Copic marker, just not taking, not being crazy, not taking too much time, just shading in that rectangle space immediately behind the window frame. Then I erased all of my pencil lines and just using liquid glue, I'm using the Lawn Fawn Precision Tip Liquid Glue for this whole project. Um, and I lined my door up right over that area with that gray rectangle. And I think between the gray and the vellum, it creates such a fun look, uh, especially once we add this little store open sign. So I colored in the background of the sign with that ground espresso. And I put the little open part that I had stamped in that matching ground espresso earlier and glued it into place right on the door front absolutely so cute <laughs> here you go now I have prepped my door handle I'm putting that into place and that is one more thing done so now I'm going to start kind of inking in all of my plants and planters I use twisted citron and mode mode lawn <laughs> distress inks for all of my greenery 
And I'm just going in with the Twisted Citron first and my mini Ranger mini ink blending tool and coloring in everything at once and then going back in with just the lightest touch of the mode lawn. And for these teeny tiny little plants that are going to be inside on the shelf, I did the smaller kind of V-shaped ones just in the Twisted Citron and the bigger ones that look kind of like little hands in the mode lawn just to change it up for my... Um, hanging baskets I did use the ground espresso to shade in kind of the dirt part of the basket and then salvage patina to uh, color in the hanging actual hanging basket part so that everything would match and look really cohesive on my little storefront I glued the dirt into the hanging basket and then I wasn't sure if the greenery was supposed to go on the front or the back I decided that I really liked it on the back kind of peeking up over the top. You could definitely do this however you want. I just really love the detail of kind of seeing that dirt through the basket and I didn't want to lose it. So I am now shading up what is going to be the backer of one of my crates. I used a Copic marker for that. And then with whatever ink was left on my ground espresso sponge, I am just kind of doing sideways swipes across these little rectangles, which are going to be the wooden planks on my crate. Then I'm going to go in with my liquid glue and lay down three stripes and put those into place. And I did do this twice so that I'll have a crate outside and a crate inside. This is just so stinking cute. There's something about these crates especially um, that I just love. These and the tiny little planters that we're going to use on the shelf inside the shop are just so stinking cute. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, so now I'm shading in two of those planters. The bigger ones we're going to do. I'm just pouncing kind of some of that salvage patina onto it. And then for these itty bitty little guys, I'm going to be bringing in one of the all to new precision brushes, detail brushes, and I'm picking up some of that picked raspberry. And again, just kind of pressing down because you really can't swipe or do those circular movements on these. They're just too tiny. So a little dot of glue on each of the greenery parts and then I'm just picking up the planters and putting them right on top, the little flower pots. These are going to be so cute inside our shop. I really think it's those little details like this that bring everything together. That's what I'm saying. They take a little bit longer because they're so small, but for me, it was 100% worth it. And the other thing I want to point out with a card like this is you don't have to do it all in one sitting the way that I did. If you only have a little bit of time and you want to just die cut and organize all of your pieces into little sandwich bags or little pinch pots like I have, um, you can do that and then walk away. And then the next time you have some free time, you can come in and ink blend all of your stuff. And then the next time you can assemble. So don't feel overwhelmed like you have to do it all at once. But also if you have a free afternoon and you just want to have fun and create and get fiddly, this is the perfect project. So for those flowers that I just did, they're so cool. You, I just um, inked up some of the flowers with the picked raspberry and some with the spiced marmalade, still using that Alta New brush. And then uh, I just adhered the, all of the individual flowers onto that little spiky thing that is all the stems. And I'm going in now to add the white little flower centers. They were just too small. You could probably just die cut them from a colored cardstock I could not wrap my head around coloring them in, so I just left them white, and I think it's really fun. I added a couple flowers to that little bush that we're going to put on the front, and then I also added some of these tiny pink flowers to the hanging baskets, and I love the look of these. I love these with the flowers. Now I have one more set of those cut flowers with the long stems. So I brought in some squeezed lemonade for just a little bit of another citrus color pop. And I'm going to do this whole bunch yellow. These are the ones that are going to go inside the shop. So I want it to kind of be like they have a whole little bunch sitting waiting to be arranged. I actually worked in a florist shop when I was in high school. So this definitely br brought me back and made me a little bit nostalgic for um, Black Eyed Susans. It was a really fun place to work. So I'm adding the little pots to all of these with um, that liquid glue, just gluing down the, sorry, adding glue to the greenery spots and then just 
placing my pots on top. I shaded in the pots with a little bit of salvaged patina as well. I like to think this would be like a very um, color theory shop to work in. And I'm adding some of that lost shadow to all of the building pieces that I am starting on now. So all of these are the little accessories that come in that main pop-up shop, nope, shop pop-up die set. And this is so cool on its own. You could definitely just do a bunch of these different shops. It comes with the bike and a bunch of still accessories and little flower pots that are really fun and unique, but you could do the flower shop like I did. And then they also have a dress boutique that was so fun. So I'm also personally hoping if anyone from Concord and Ninth, Ninth ever watches this, I would love a coffee shop accessory kit. I'm just throwing it out there. I think that would be very cute. So <laughs> I added that main thicker piece, that thicker rectangle to the bottom. This is kind of like a little planter or I don't know, some kind of extra detailing on the building. And I love it with the two little cutouts on front, the front. And then I'm adding a column to each side. And for this, I used a Copic marker to just color in those solid, I believe it was N2, a neutral gray to color in the solid layer. And that way, when I put the striped layer on top, that little bit of shading peeks through those cutouts and you just get that little bit of extra dimension and shadow. Then these bigger rectangles go on the bottom. I'm pretty sure there were also two that were meant to go on the top, but I think I thought they were window pieces and I'm pretty sure I threw them out. So don't do that or do it because I think it still looks cute. I just put them on the bottom and then use the tiny rectangles as an added third layer on the tops and bottoms of both columns. And I think it just really pulls everything together. Plus with the awning, you're not going to see a ton of that top section anyway. So that little rectangle is the strip, the same one that I used to create my shelf. I did add one to the front. And then now I'm adding a piece of heavy duty acetate sheet to the inside to create my little window panel. This is also not necessary, but I think it's just such an adorable step and really gives that extra little detail and makes it look just a tiny bit more real. So I added my hanging baskets one to each side of my window. And I love the extra color and the way that the pink flowers kind of help to tie everything together. Inside my um, little shop, I am adding that yellow bucket of flowers as well as one of the crates and my little pink watering can. So cute. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. And that's what I'm saying. This video is definitely longer. We're already 17 minutes in, but you can see like I was hustling the whole time. Um, it's just, it, you could definitely keep it more simple, but I loved all of the detail and I'm pretty sure that most card makers out there, especially if you've made it this far in, you are a sucker for detail too. So I think you guys will definitely appreciate this one. Um, and I hope it inspires you to get a little bit inky and a little bit fiddly. So I'm taking some quarter inch scrappy tape and I am adding it to the topmost and bottommost scored section for the window front, as well as the upper part of the awning on the back of where our sentiment is. Those are the only three places that you need to add score tape or scrappy tape. And I'm starting out by adhering the bottom into place. You want to line up that section that has the tape, that smaller section, with the bottom of the card. And that way your whole shop sits flat when you open it. And then you're going to extend everything all the way up and fold over that top section to put it in place. And that way, again, when you open your card, everything kind of shifts down and opens up. For the awning, you just take off the top area and you line it right up with the top of your card. I found this was easiest to do by kind of flipping it upside down. And then your awning, when everything's done, will fold flat down. Your shop folds up and then it lays flat in a card, which is just absolutely mind boggling to me. So this is my completed project with the acetate window and all of the little details. And I just hope you're so inspired. I loved making this card and I have so many other ideas for different color combinations to do. And don't even get me started with my fall ideas. So make sure if you're not already that you subscribe to the Scrapbook Pouch 
channel and make sure that you are checking online on their Instagram account for so much crafty inspiration. I hope that you have the most amazing week and until I see you again, happy crafting.